Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at one spin with Brett Klein, who's going to talk today about System C verification. So, Brett, both HLS and formal verification have been around for a long time, but they've pretty much been in separate worlds, right? What's changed? So, as you know, HLS has been around for 20 to 30 years, and in my previous life, uh, I sold a lot of HLS around the world and deployed it with customers. And there's a number of reasons that people pick up HLS, right, for better productivity, for design reuse, and for better quality of results. But they had some challenges along the way, too, which is while the HLS productivity improvements were there, the ecosystem around System C and HLS wasn't quite there for the verification environment. And so formal verification has also been around for quite a long time, and it's been applied to the ver to RTL design for you know, the last 10 plus years. But it's never really been applied to System C based designs. So at one spin, we've taken the opportunity to take our systems, our formal verification tools, and apply those to HLS and System C. And we'll see some really interesting uh, benefits from that. So what do you actually get from that from a high level? What, what, what does that bring to the table? So from a high level, it brings you the ability to improve your overall verification environment by reducing your need to simulate quite as much and by optimizing your code and eliminating errors long before the HLS process. And this can save you a ton of time in RTL verification. So why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. So Brad, what are we looking at here? So here we're looking at the typical high-level synthesis flow, right? It starts off with an algorithmic model that needs to be refined into a high-level synthesis model. So during that phase, you code your design up to be hardware, and you'll eliminate things like memory allocation or unusual things that don't make sense in hardware. You'll size your data, and you'll make everything uh, appropriate for a hardware design with parallelism and so on. From your HLS coding, you'll go into high-level synthesis. And then at that point, you'll spend your time generating RTL and eventually go through R RTL verification. This is a very traditional flow. And then there's a really long debug and optimization loop as you reduce area, get your power to where you want it, and get your performance there, and then make sure everything works before you go through the back end. So what's new here? So what's new is that there's an opportunity for us to improve this loop by adding in some formal verification technology inside the HLS flow. And that's what we're doing. So here inside of this box here, we'll add in HLS formal. Formal comes into a number of different um, uh, ways here. So we've got auto checks that automatically check your code and look for opportunities to improve it. We've got um, some automated apps that you can go through and take a look for things like X's and other different design flaws that you might find. And then we can run full system Verilog assertions on this. And so what the idea is, is that by using HLS formal earlier in the process, we can cut this debug and optimization loop significantly uh, and, and probably by about two thirds. And this is not just for classic hardware, right? Because if you think about where HLS is going, it's going into algorithms as well. So now you're dealing with the functionality of an entire hardware co uh, software code design. Most system C is used today for uh, two purposes. One is for hardware design and the other is for virtual platforms. And so in this flow here, we're talking specifically about the hardware design and how we can uh, adopt that flow with formal. Um, but down the road, you can see where this would go into hardware software co-verification and virtual platform models as well. So let's drill down into this a little bit. What are some of the benefits of doing it this way? So some of the benefits of doing this way are that I can now start my verification process much earlier. So in, traditionally, I would do some amount of simulation up here in my HLS coding, but most of the verification ended up pushing down into the RTL level. This gives us the opportunity to reduce the amount of simulation time that we take and find errors long before we get to the RTL verification. Good idea, but how do you do it? So how do you do it and what, what types of things do you do? So the checks that we perform automatically is we look for initialization issues. We look for memory out of bounds issues. And we look for things that ca could cause problems in your design, but are very difficult to find in simulation. Can you give us an example here? Sure. So here's an example of an, uh, an array out of bounds. And so here's an example. This is system C code, and this is a 26-bit array. So it's defined, as you see here. And then we're actually calling on the 27th uh, array element. And in this case, this is an out of bounds array uh, right. And this is something that looks quite simple, but in your code as it's, as, it's, um, as it's written, it may be very hard to find. And you're also coming into this from, this is not just 
these two lines of code. This is embedded in lots of very complex code all the way through the design, right? That's right. And for simplicity, I've called this you know, out simply as 227 here. But the reality is, as you're doing complicated hardware, these are values that are usually calculated from somewhere else. So this may be something like a determined, width, uh, a determined value based on an input signal or some division or some complicated math that's not so easy to just read right off the screen. Does that change as we start getting change orders into these designs too? Can you now say, okay, Okay, this may not apply anymore. Sure. In this case, you know, you may find that this cone of logic goes back, you know, 10 different levels through 10 different modules. And perhaps someone's changed something way back in the earlier module that you didn't know about. And when that happens, the formal tools can read this and track all that information down and show you what's happening. So you're looking at things like context and dependencies and all the other potential I issues of interactions. Yeah, so especially in a case like this where, like I said earlier, that it's a really complicated cone of logic, we can track down dependencies that engineers may not be able to keep in their head. Where do you see this being used today, and how do you actually see this evolving into different markets? Yeah, so today HLS is being used across a wide variety of spaces. I think uh, most of the use is probably in cameras and in wireless and some of those devices as well. And formal fits really well into a number of those different uh, different applications. But you can also see HLS in control dominated designs, something that has not been had not been traditional about 10 years ago, but is now mainstream. And also a great application for formal to come in. So whether it's your SSD controller or you've got some memories or some other things that you're designing, HLS is a good start place to start and formal is a really good way for you to uh, apply verification to it. So basically what you've done is you've taken the HLS and added a full ecosystem around it and been it, now you can take these tools and use them in, in ways that you really couldn't do in the past, right? It was, it was more, you had to develop this all from scratch. Yeah, so I think I think the ecosystem is evolving, and this is one good piece in it. There's there's obviously some other opportunities for tools out in that space. HLS is solid. The market's going really well, and the system C environment that's around HLS is is really continuing to grow. And by moving traditional tools like Formal from RTL to System C, we've taken a great step to provide uh, the users of HLS with a, a much better tool set. New applications in areas like uh, functional safety, medical, industrial. Sure. Um, one of the things we offer in our suite is all functional safety tools, and these can be applied to the system C designs as well. And also where we see things going in terms of trust and security, right? Security is an important part of every design, and as you apply HLS and system C to it, we can apply formal techniques to make sure that your design is meeting all of your requirements. As you well know, out of the, the formal world, that took a long time to get going because people didn't necessarily think in assertions. Has that changed? Do you need a different skill set or a different mindset to use this? So with HLS in general, you're, you're taking your hardware design skills and you're learning a little bit more about abstraction. And in the case of formal, we're doing a lot of the work for you by doing automated checks, but we also have the ability to do full system Verilog assertions. And so you can use those assertions in, a, in an HLS design, in a system C design, to start to do more complete verification. And sure, there's a learning curve if you've never used formal before, but what you'll find is assertions really provide you value by starting much earlier and reducing the amount of simulation time you have to do. Is the learning curve about how to use the tools or is it a methodology change? I think it's much more of a methodology change. You know, certainly with any tool set, there's, there's a learning curve for how to do that, for how to use it. But at the same time, a little bit of a methodology change. You need to decide what your flow looks like and then your tools fit into that flow pretty, pretty easily. Brett Klein, thanks for a great explanation. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.